it's too premature to say that. At least based in our uh, cases in Taiwan, we didn't see that. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that uh, should not be a uh, main concern to me, yeah. Mm. Yeah, you know, the reason we can keep our cases low is we have a very furious and comprehensive uh, uh, finding cases isolate them if needed and quarantine some of them so you know that uh, uh, we practice as uh, 14 days as our rule so every day we have a house call then uh, we check people the compliance and uh, make sure they are following the rules as we did and uh, uh, before so uh, this is uh, a system work by public health nurses and uh, you got to have some of the civil servants in the local uh, districts and they are working with this person uh, under investigation or confirmed cases to do this kind of uh, quarantine at home. Mm -hmm. So uh, 14 days is ours uh, uh, rules and uh, some of them will be test and uh, if some of them are not uh, test or we will see whether they check the temperatures and uh, uh, of them in whether they have uh, symptoms. So uh, 14 days. Yeah, every time we have this kind of a newly emerging diseases and uh, there's always uh, uh, this kind of uh, traditional ways of uh, medicines or some, uh, nutrients uh, claim to be uh, effective in Taiwan and in Chinese uh, society. I think there's a lot of uh, such kind of claims, and um, uh, but none of them has been uh, seriously studied and under like a, a random and controlled trial to prove it. But you know, if you don't have anything to treat people, and people will uh, try to find their way to 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 make them uh, uh, feel better or uh, be stronger, that's uh, that's. Uh, most of them, I don't think this uh, is true. We've had to really revamp how we think about so many aspects of our lives. Um, and I think that this is something that people who think about pandemics a lot have been raising now for a while. Um, and I think in this case scenario where you have very high rates of transmissibility, you have an infection that may be transmitted, is certainly transmitted when someone is asymptomatic. And then you combine that with global travel, you have a, a pandemic on your hands. And I think we are clearly seeing that play out. I think we need to be thinking much more constructively about ways that we can stay interconnected while still remaining separate from one another. And certainly right now, there's no question that social isolation is absolutely key to trying to break the path here in terms of transmissibility. So, upon my knowledge, I don't uh, saw a significant study about that, particularly about this, you know, type of virus. <coughs> Definitely <coughs> different, uh, you know, blood type may have some you know impact but generally speaking I upon my knowledge I haven't heard about that so I think that this is all being discerned real time and there's no question that we can learn quite a bit from countries where they have managed to um, bend and flatten the curve certainly um, as our guest saying in Taiwan they've had great success South Korea in China, they just announced that they have not had a new case um, demically. And so I think that there are a lot of lessons here. I think best case scenario, if we have the strictest of isolation measures in this country, we are talking at least a couple months for based upon what we're seeing in China. But again, if those measures aren't attained, this is going to continue to evolve. And I'm talking about just in the United States. This is going to continue to evolve throughout the world globally. And I don't predict that it will um, end until we have a very effective vaccine that we can disseminate widely.